Right is Might, Social Justice and Corporate Profits. Hi, my name is Pramod Sharma, and this is a studio recording of a presentation I gave at the Global Change Initiative. Can businesses pursue their own interests while doing good work for society? According to the latest Edelman Trust Barometer, 84% say yes. But in real life, does doing the right thing boost corporate profits? Let's turn to the world of the actuary, the world of science, hypotheses, experiments, verifiable truths, displays of proof. How can we prove that doing right causes higher profits? There are too many unpredictable and uncontrollable factors. Do you remember our latest ice storm? Priorities change when people are without electricity or heat for days and repairing damage for months. Models cannot reflect these disruptions. We'll stray from the world of deductive reasoning into the world of appearances and impressions. We'll use inductive reasoning. Here's an example. What's cute, Canadian, cuts down trees and does not wear a toque? A beaver. Another example. If it looks, waddles, and quacks like a duck, it is a duck. What is right? The answer differs for the buyers, sellers, owners, regulators, general public. How would the public react if they knew? We'll use this as the smell test. Standards change. Maybe soft drinks aren't the best choice for babies now, or adults either. How do companies show what they're doing is considered right now? Companies show what they've done in the past. That implies what they'll do in the future. There is no guarantee. What are the benefits of doing right? What are the consequences of doing wrong? What are the chances of either? We turn to Blaise Pascal's elegant approach to uncertainty, decision theory from the world of gambling and probabilities. A company that does wrong when no one cares makes money. A company that does wrong when the world cares is on the path to bankruptcy. A company that does right when no one cares makes money. A company that does right when the world cares has tremendous success. Each outcome is possible. Which is the best long-term strategy for business? Let's explore each option. Doing right when it doesn't matter is a placebo and has many good side effects. Internally, this is a way to engage employees and make them more innovative, more creative, more likely to stay, easier to recruit. Externally, there's good publicity. Overall, this is cheap insurance. Doing right when doing right matters. This is a winning strategy that maximizes profits and leads to good publicity. A company that does more of what's right has a chance to get a bigger competitive advantage and higher profits. This is cheap insurance too. Plus, the public thinks a win-win is possible. When I started working, four of the six people in my area smoked. At their desks. At a life insurance company. Imagine that today. Doing wrong may work for a while, but standards change. What then? It's too easy to end up doing wrong at the wrong time, a risky strategy. Doing right has the best payoffs in the long term. Wouldn't you want to make sure your parachute is packed properly and that you have friends? Right is might. The name and shame game can start with a single person. Brominated vegetable oil, or BVO, is banned in over a hundred countries, but allowed in the U.S. and Canada. 15-year-old Mississippi vegan Sarah Cavanaugh did not think that a patented flame retardant belonged in sports drinks like Gatorade. That product has a 70% market share of sports drinks in the U.S. Sarah started a petition on change.org. Here's what she said. At first, the company didn't want to talk to me. They sent me a form letter and thanked me for my feedback. But more people signed and the media got interested. The petition got so big it couldn't be ignored. Sarah got over 200,000 signatures. Pepsi backed down in a month. 
Last year, in Rana Plaza in Bangladesh, an eight-floor building collapsed. The factories were making clothing for brands you know and may be wearing. Many deaths and injuries occurred. What happened after the tragedy? Companies responded in different ways, starting with denial. In an odd tweet, Benetton said that they were not involved. Even if this were true, why not show sympathy for the workers? This photo shows a shirt with their label in the rubble, along with an attendance sheet for their workers. Did they really not know? Other companies were reactive. Companies from around the world signed an accord on fire and building safety. That's a start. In Canada, only one company signed, Loblaw. The rest, you can guess the names, refused. U.S. holdouts include Walmart and The Gap. Another reactive action is a compensation fund for the victims. The goal was $40 million U.S. Guess how much was collected a year after the disaster? Only $17 million. Some companies were proactive and not involved at all. One which decided to lead is Everlane. They stand for radical transparency, quality, and low markups. They avoided the problems by knowing their factories. You can too because they put details online. You get a peek inside the factories. This one makes 20,000 t-shirts a month in Los Angeles. Hooray for reshoring! You learn how the products are made and why they're made that way. You see the costs and the markups, though they're a little hard to find. This information is on Tumblr, not their website. If you want companies to change, reward the proactive over the reactive, over the ones that show they don't care. The world is moving towards transparency and social justice. People are starting to care about the harm businesses do around the world. They are paying more attention to where things are made, how and by whom. Change happens fast and has permanent consequences. Ten years ago in 2004, did you have a smartphone? There was no iPhone, no Android. Today, who doesn't have a smartphone? Would you give yours up? How often do you upgrade? What do you do with the old one? What's the effect on the environment and the workers? Imagine a smartphone like this. This is the Fairphone from the Netherlands. It launched in 2013. It's the world's first ethical smartphone. Fairphone is putting social values first. They focus on clear pricing. This slide shows where the money goes. They've opened up the supply chain and show that they do not use any conflict minerals. They also address e-waste. Part of the price includes safe recycling. Will Fairphone succeed? The first batch of 25,000 sold out. People paid in advance and waited for a mid-range product which did not even exist. The new batch is 35,000 and over 11,000 have been sold already. The price is over $400. What about the 5 billion people who don't have a smartphone? How about a phone which is cheap, repairable, and upgradable? This is Project Ara from Google's Motorola division. The first developer conference was last month. You select the camera, if you want a camera, the speed, the amount of storage, the battery capacity, and the wireless capabilities, Wi-Fi and or cellular. You assemble the phone the way you want. Here's the result. Models are expected in 2015. The target price is as little as $50 for a screen, case, and Wi-Fi. Companies can do what's right. People can too. Let's return to Sarah Kavanaugh. She was not finished. Powerade had BVO too. She started another petition. Pepsi took over 200,000 signatures to back down. Coca-Cola needed less than 60,000. This month, they decided to remove BVO from all products. PepsiCo was still using BVO in drinks like Mountain Dew. They also agreed to a complete elimination. Not bad for one teen versus two megacorporations. Right is might. 
Did they change because they knew they were doing wrong, or because changing was cheaper than the bad publicity? One person can make a difference because people are trusted. The general public is near the top, just behind the experts. Their score increased 15% over the last five years. The wisdom of crowds is possible because we're connected. CEOs rank low, trusted by only two in five. We can change corporate behavior. We have power. We buy. We influence. But the shift in power only matters if we use it. Act on your beliefs. Stand for something. Start a petition or sign one. Help others by sharing what you know. Write reviews for what you buy and the places you go. Sharing begets sharing. Start here. Start today. In our ever more connected and transparent world, how long is doing wrong sustainable? Doing the right thing is cheap insurance. If companies don't see the benefits today, what about tomorrow? We are social. We are just. We can make social justice a requirement for corporate profits. Let's pull together. We have the strength unless we let go and weaken everyone else. Companies are people. Buyers are people. If you want companies to do the right thing, do the right thing yourself, inside and outside of work. We have the power, unless we're unplugged. You can be part of the Global Change Initiative. Imagine a million slingshots against each Goliath, or a beaver with a power tool in a forest of indifference. Right is might. You might make a difference. Right? Will you?